Come on, lift up your voice. Now, what, 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 wait a minute. Do something else. Let's, let's establish, first of all, what this meeting is about. It's not about looking. Everybody look. Look at your person on your left. Look at the person on your right. Turn around and look at the person behind you. Have you seen everybody now? Okay. This is Mike Motley. This is the band. I'll wave at everybody so they get a good look at you. Some of them are single. Some of them are married. This is a worship team. You see them? I'm married to this one right here on the end, this lady on the end. Now, now we need a couple more of those stools out there because these people have been working hard. And, and, and a few ushers will bring me about four stools. Y'all can sit down whenever you want to, okay? This is not about marathon praise. Uh, the Bible says that, f- that uh, bodily exercise profiteth little. Now, however... We're all coming in right now. And so I know some of you have had various days. Some of you are visiting and you're going, what's this all about? Tonight we're going to worship the Lord. Now, let me explain something to you that happens in the spirit. When we say we're coming in to worship the Lord, the devil hears that. He heard it the other day when we announced it. So he's got principality stationed. Now, where are my intercessor folks at? The ones that are on staff here at Brownsville. I mean, you're, 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 where you at? Where you at? Well, I'll get you here next week. Who, know, who knows how to pray? There you are. Okay, good. You all need to pray. And what some of you all need to do is shake religion off of you. Because what, what Satan will do is he'll try to bring you into a place like this and get you to shut up. Now, it's not in shouting and yelling. And, and realize this. Before you get all, all excited about your flesh and all, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, I know that praise does drop down walls, but see, praise can come from anything. The Bible says the trees can praise the Lord, the ocean can praise the Lord, the clouds can praise the Lord. Uh, Someone who doesn't live right and sings secular music and seductive music can stand up at the Grammys and say, I thank God. They can praise God because that's right. The scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Uh, Homosexuals who are practicing, prostitutes child molesters everybody can praise God because the scripture says let everything that has breath praise the Lord so to praise the Lord doesn't mean you've done anything particularly holy you're just saying the Lord is good and he let me live another day thank you Lord but if we want to go further than praise (laughs) we have to go by protocol and that means we come into the doors we enter the courts then we get through the gates first and right now we're at the gates and what we've got to do is I'm, I'm not advocating that all of you just go crazy and go nuts and act stupid. I'm advocating that you don't allow the enemy to silence your praise to the Lord. Because we've asked the Lord, we've said, Lord, come into this place and just let your glory be seen. We want to praise you. But we want to do more than that. Anybody can praise you, Lord, but we want to do something to you that only the ones who know you in an intimate first name way can do. We also want to worship at your feet. And we want to say words of praise and worship that only people who know you can. We don't want to say those way outside the gates, thank God for this Grammy from someone who doesn't have a relationship. We want to say, thank God for our jobs, thank God for our breath, thank God for our family, coming from someone who knows him. Now, how many know him today? Now, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, let's get rid of that real quick because you can't praise him because he doesn't hear you. Let's get rid of all the sin, whatever you got to get rid of. If you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, if you're still mad about something, get rid of it. If you yelled at your wife, go right now, reach over there, kiss her on the cheek and say, honey, it's all my fault. I apologize because nothing's worth missing my worship right now. Okay, good. Get all that out. Now, Now, I'm up here as a tool to show you how to look like an idiot. That's all I am. I'm a worship leader. Mike is also an idiot. We're both idiots together. Because what we do is we prove that if anybody can look that stupid and praise the Lord, then you can. So that means you don't have to stand there and be cool because we don't really care what you think about us. It doesn't matter to us. So fire up something there that we can can shake a leg to and... and, uh, And let's do what the scripture says. 
let's let everything that has breath praise the Lord and let's do what the psalm says all my bones shall praise him I will dance and sing and glorify and magnify and all that and don't let it just be a few of the radical people getting into the dance thing some of you who are carrying how many are walking through depression a little bit I, I sense some people here with some depression you need to dance more than any of us okay if you're going through some kind of hell in your life Satan has come against you just get I challenge you it, Get out there and I'll shake a leg a little bit. Move around. Let your blood flow. Now, we're still not where I want to go in worship, but we're going to start here. This is the gate stuff, all right? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me. 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 He, I can't hear you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I can't hear you. Lift up your voice. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm free. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Let me hear his name. Let me hear his name. Let me hear his name. I can't hear you. All right, wait a minute. Like you're yelling at your kids. Let me hear the name of Jesus. Come on. One, two, three. Jesus. Let me hear his name. Jesus. Let me hear his name. Jesus. I can't hear you. Jesus. Let heaven hear you. Jesus. Let hell hear you. Jesus. No other name. Jesus. Come on, let's sing. Are y'all ready now? Take I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I am blessed beyond the curse for his promise will endure and his joy is gonna be my strength for the sorrows may last for the night his joy
yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> if you haven't figured it all right already, we're just here to worship Jesus. I don't know if I know this. Kind of goes with that song. Let's see. Let's do another key. I know I've been changed I know I've been changed I know I've been changed Because the angels in heaven done sign my name Testify, say, I know I've been changed. Come on, church. I know I've been changed because the angels in heaven done sign my name. Somebody said, I don't know where that came from. I don't either. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We came to praise you, Lord. Because we're free, we're free, we're free. 
We're free, we're free, we're free, yes we are. Hallelujah. Waiting on you, waiting on you, patiently waiting on you. I ain't worried about the time, Lord, I seem to find. Strength while I'm waiting on you. Everybody sing. Waiting on you. Waiting on you. Patiently. Patiently. Say it again with me, church. This part the word of God says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Yeah, they shall run and not. Sing it to him now. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Strength, Lord, strength 
while I wait Strength while I What you will do, Lord. That's why I'm willing to wait. of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our heart as we offer up this sacrifice of praise Lord tonight at Browns what we just say welcome into this place all church singing with me welcome into this broken vessel welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we Sacrifice of praise. Come on, why don't you welcome him right now into your vessel? Come on. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire. of your people so we lift our hand and we lift our hearts yes we do as we offer up the sacrifice of praise come on church sing So Hallelujah, oh Lord, we praise 
your name. You're the only reason we came, Jesus. All the glory and all the praise. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. about you all day long. Can't wait to sing a new song to you, Lord. Oh, Lord. About how good you are. About how faithful you are, Lord. Oh, Lord. I want to just pour out my heart before you, Jesus. I want to pour out my love on you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. you right now to make up a new song to sing to the Lord. Come on. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise your name. You're the sun in the morning. You're the stars at night. You give the darkness. Give the darkness light. It runs from you, Lord. No shadow of turning in you, Lord. You're faithful, you're faithful, you're faithful, you're faithful, you're faithful. I praise your name. 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 I praise your
praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. Sacrifice of praise, mm, Lord. We bring our offering, Jesus, to lay at your feet, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. We'd rather be right now, Lord. But with you, Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like everything about you, Lord. Mm-hmm. So good. Yes, I do. I remember this morning when I woke up, Jesus. I took my first breath and I just said, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. We gathered here at Brownsville tonight, Lord, because we just think you're the living in, you're everything, you're the beginning, you're the end, you're out to the Omega. <laughs> oh wow oh Jesus do y'all think we can get past the end you know, get on into the gate down get on in the courts you see worshiping the Lord is as simple as that it's as simple as just coming in the door and saying Lord you're all I want Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you so, I love you so. In the good times, I praise you. In the bad times, I praise you. Because every day, you're worthy. You're worthy every day, Lord. I love you, I love you, I love. Hallelujah. Tonight, as we worship the Lord, don't sit down now. Now, if you're just old and sick, you can sit down. If your legs give out on you or you're expecting, if you've worked really hard, you can sit down. I don't mind. But just for the next minute or two, we're learning something at Brownsville. It's about about bringing our gifts to the Lord. The Lord has unleashed the spirit of giving in our church. Tonight, just make your, any checks you're writing, make them payable to Brownsville Assembly. We would appreciate your help so much. But we're not going to interrupt this praise of the Lord. You know, it's, it's kind of an offense to say that. We want to interrupt things and receive an offering. Forgive us, Lord. Because our opportunity to give to you is not an interruption, it's a continuation. Because real worship doesn't happen until it really gets in your wallet. A lot of times we can praise the Lord all day long and sing and bless Him until somebody says something about money. Because we feel like that's ours. It's not yours any more than the breath you breathe is yours. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above, from the Father of lights, who loves to give good gifts to his children. If you're from another church, we'd ask you please to not put your tithes in this offering because it's not where it belongs. But we will take an offering. This is a good fertile place to put money into. 
I don't know if any of y'all saw TBN this afternoon, but uh, Steve was on there, Steve Hill. Did anybody see that? How many saw that? I got to talk to him. It looks like he's gained a little weight. Steve's a good man. He began to tell the story about Father's Day 1995. Got me all stirred up again. Just got me ready to come in here and worship the Lord. The Lord has done a lot of things in this place. As you bring your offering tonight, I want you to thank Him for what He's done. And I want you to thank Him for what He's going to do. He's not finished. He's just starting. We'll take more, Lord. Everybody get an offering out, even if it's small, whatever it is. Everybody participate. If you don't have any money, ask somebody next to you and take some of theirs. Praise the Lord, oh God of my soul. Oh God of my soul. And all my being praise His name. His throne just for you. His throne just for you. He forgives you all your sins. Come on, say this with me. And heals all your diseases. Sing. And heals all your diseases. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Father. I love you, Jesus, so much. Bring 
your blessing Worship him now Invite him Invite him in this place Clap your hands Clap your hands Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Took your voice, church. There's the presence of the Lord you feel here. Come on, just let him go. That's the presence of the Lord you feel. Come on. Father, we offer this money to you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to let it go far for your kingdom, Jesus. We bless those, Lord, that have given tonight, that have sacrificially given. We bless them. We thank you, Lord, that their hearts of worship go beyond just their words and extend to their livelihood. Bless it, Lord. Bless it, Lord. Father, send increase and rebuke the devourer. Send increase to them, Lord. Regardless of what the economy does, your kingdom has no crisis. In Jesus' name. Oh. 
for the Lord says to you tonight, many of you have come and you've asked, why am I in this place? You've come and you've even thought, maybe it's just another meeting. But the Lord says, I have sovereignly appointed tonight. I have appointed this time to bring the things that have been laid to rest in your life. The things that have been laid to rest by discouragement. Also those things that have been hindered by your failure to walk in purity. The Lord says, I call again to those deep things in you. I call deeply to you. And, and, and many of you, the Lord shows me in this place tonight, have been walking in dry places and dry paths. And even in your minds this week, you've said, Lord, has the river dried up? Is this all there is? Is this all there is? And the Lord says that I am, I've come in this place in my presence tonight to pull those things back out that you have out of discouragement and despondency and some of you even in disobedience have put back away. And you've thought, Lord, they're for another day. But the Lord says that they're for now that you need to keep the fire. You need to be a keeper of the fire. You need to keep the fire in your heart. You need to keep the passion in your heart. Don't allow anyone or anything or any happening to interfere with that. For it is an entrustment and a gift to you. Mm. Holy Spirit, come stir right now. Stir right now, Lord. Stir right now, Jesus. Stir. Stir. Lord, dig again the wells, Lord Jesus. Dig again the wells, Jesus. The wells, Lord. Dig the wells again, Lord. Lord, remove the blocks. Remove the hindrances. Remove, God, the dust. Lord, remove the, the, the bricks, the stone, the wood that have clouded the first vision and first love. Move them out in Jesus' name. Move them out in Jesus' name. Move them out in this place tonight, Lord. Move them out in Jesus' name. Bring freedom to the captives, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may be seated just a moment. Don't, don't, lose, don't lose your, your reference point. That's a block right there. Stay right there. I want to bring a scripture to you and then we're going to pray. This is, everybody stay close because I don't know what's going to happen. Holy Spirit is here. What I want to do is use these Thursday nights. You see, Brownsville, uh, those of you who are from Brownsville, those of you who are visiting, it's time for a change to happen in the church. It's time for a change to happen in the church. It's time for us to move out of performance in worship, and it's time for us to move out of rote in worship, and it's time to move out of even emotionalism and move into the heart of God because it's time for change. And I know when I say this, I'm going to come under attack from the enemy, and it's okay. But I'm telling you right now, the, the heart of the matter is the heart of the matter. Things that will change you. See, we have to understand that the kingdom is not about us. It's about itself. It's about Jesus. It's about the Father. It's about a plan that's been laid from the foundation of time that has a lot to do with us as long as we walk in faithfulness and honesty and holiness unto the Lord. But the minute we choose to step out of that place, the kingdom goes right on. Hello? I'm going to minister what's on my spirit tonight, what I feel is happening here. Let me get you. I'm going to change mics to this mic. Mike, would you take this mic so that you can sing in a moment? I'm going to really be quick, but here's what I want to say. Brownsville has hosted a meetings that have drawn people from all over the world. And when I would listen to Steve today on TV, it was just kind of stirring my hunger again. And uh, I want you to understand, I'm, abs <clears throat> I'm absolutely ruined. I'm spoiled, and, and I'm, I don't know how to get back to normal. Matter of fact, I don't think what I was was normal. 
I have been touched by something greater and higher. And I have a passion for more of the Lord. I don't have a passion for more church. I'm not angry or bitter or aggravated in anybody. I, I'm just, it, church don't do it for me anymore. Getting dressed up and coming and doing religion. But I realize that in those churches out there across America, there are people who are mighty warriors in Christ that have the power to bring in the harvest. You know, a lot of us go out, we're going to get the harvest from the streets. But let me tell you what, there's a massive harvest sitting on the pews of the churches of America of people who have put away the things that God has said for them to do. And I ask you this question. You did run well. What happened to you? You did have a passion. What happened to you? You did have fire in your eyes. You did have power in your voice. And you were ecstatic. I'm asking you, what happened to you? Did someone offend you? Did someone disgrace you? Did God fail you? Then what hindered your race? Got quiet, didn't it? Turn to 1 Samuel. I've been on this now for months. I decided at Brownsville this summer when pastor invited me and made it available for me to come and minister to you and lead worship and do things like this on Thursday night that what I was going to do is take a few moments and, and stay with the subject of why we worship. Now, I'm not going to give you the typical why we worship because I'm convinced that most people in America, not everybody, but a large majority of churchgoers in America don't understand what worship is. And I hear it constantly from pulpits when I'm out because people don't understand what worship is because the immediate thing they say is, well, worship ain't going to get you through. It's the Word of God that's going to get you through. Let me say this to you. That worship that doesn't have the Word of God incorporated in it isn't worship at all. Hello? I want you to change your, your cap on this thing. Worship has nothing to do with this music. Matter of fact, this music probably has more to do with performance than anything to do with worship. I don't like this setup, but it's the one we've got. You're used to coming in and people worshiping so you can watch. There's something wrong with that. And if the Word of God is not part of worship, then there's something wrong with that too. When worship is in its proper place, it not only incorporates the Word of God, but it stands on the Word of God 100%. It sings the Word of God. And since when did singing the Word of God become any less powerful than preaching it? Never. The Word of God shall stand forever. It is yes and amen. It is the foundation. Whether it's sang, talked, preached, written, it's still the Word of God. So let's just get that out of our crawl real quick. Now, I will agree with pastors and preachers and ministers across the world that most of the time, what we have that we've called worship won't get you through. It sure don't get me through. I'm not interested in another good worship leader. God doesn't need another good worship leader. He doesn't need another good worship song. He doesn't need it. He needs someone who is so focused on his heart and so full of passion and worship that all they want to do is tell him how wonderful he is. Because most places sing, dance, shout, scream, yell, but very few worship. I said very few worship because their worship is all about me. I feel bad. Sing something to make me feel good. Crowd's a little low tonight. We better sing something fast because everybody's sleeping. What's that have to do with God? Nothing. It has nothing to do with God, and it's got to stop. I'm not here to sing a song to put a jingle in your toes. I love you, but that ain't what I'm about. I've lost any passion for that. Now, do I still sing gate songs? Yeah, we got to have gate songs. Let me tell you, some of y'all walked in here this tonight, you were a little low. We needed some gate music to kind of get us all in the door. You were here physically, but your mind was other places. And there's something about when you do this, 
it gets your mind and your body in the same place because most of you never move like that and when you start moving something you realize it's hurting so you know that you're there I'm in church now I believe there is a dance that's holy to the Lord there's a sanctified holy dance I don't see much of it in the church but there's a holy dance that happens sometimes when the glory of God comes upon someone Miss Judy knows what I'm talking about and some of you old timers know what I'm talking about some of you new timers need to learn it it's a worship dance that happens when one minute you're, you're thinking about your step and you're thinking about the goodness of the Lord and the next minute you just you like hit the you hit, jump off the ground and you in midair you step into another dimension and you forget where you are and you forget that you have a body and you forget that you're going to get tired and winded brother Kerry you forget that's a holy dance that happens and I I for one have participated in such a dance on rare occasions when I was younger sometimes for hours at a time hours at a time now that's not physically possible in most cases but I've seen that happen but for the most part dancing just gets us in the gate and gets our body and our mind all in the same place that's all it does it's not particularly spiritual because in, when I grew up in church people who danced the biggest and hit, they cussed the most so dancing don't impress me because you wore hoop and ah, I'm chasing off demons well it depends if you're living like one or not you ain't doing nothing but making a commotion is there anything wrong with it? no go ahead it's not impressing me at all and it's not impressing God if there's not holiness in your life now do you have to get holy to dance no you don't have to be saved to dance you can dance they do it every night in clubs all across the world they do it in a lot of churches too it's a learned dance it's a learned behavior you learn the dance you know I grew up in, in, in a lot of black churches and a lot of the black church folks they know how to dance it's like wow Sometimes that's God and sometimes it's learned. Sometimes it has nothing to do with God. It's just I learned how to dance. Every church has their own. Right here we do this. Doesn't mean we're spiritual. It just means this is how we all dance. We saw somebody else do it. Thought we'd try it. I thought you had to be really... No, you don't. It's all about getting your body and your mind in the same place. That's what it is. It's praising. If you'll read up the, on your scriptures, and we'll, we'll go through some of these on Thursday nights, but scriptures about praise always, almost always, not in every case, but in majority of cases involve a physical movement or a shouting with the voice. The scripture talks about praising. It usually has some kind of an instrument attached to it. Psalms 150 is a great one. Praise the Lord in the sanctuary. Praise Him. And again, I, I, I know that I, I, I border on sacrilege and scare some of y'all when I say stuff like that. But the scripture is very clear about letting everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything. It didn't say only the redeemed can do it. It said everything. Have you ever known anybody in your, in, your, in your life when you knew they were heathens and they didn't even live right and they cussed and they drank and they fornicated and they did all that stuff, but they have a near-death experience and they come out of it praising God? It's the grace of God. Some people, Brother Kerry, I've seen it doesn't change their lives. Some people it does. But they give thanks to the Lord that they're alive. Suddenly they realize they need to be thankful. And that's praising the Lord. But that's not the kind that's going to get the job done so I'm not interested in that I don't want to stop any of that around here because Lord we don't want to all sit there with our arms folded we need to get the body in motion here and get the heart engaged but the thing that I'm hungry for the thing that I'm just going nuts over right now is just saying Lord I don't want to hear the latest fad I'm not interested in what everybody else is doing over in Kansas City or over in Jacksonville or up in Chicago or over in Dallas praise God it's wonderful and I may go visit some of those places but what I'm interested most in is finding the heart of the Lord so I can pour more worship on him so I can love him some more because in that is the cause of our being and the reason that God has redeemed us you know that? I want you to, I'm going to read a scripture to you really quick. I'm going to paraphrase a couple of things and we're going to pray. It's this, 1 Samuel 16. This is where Saul anoints David, or Samuel anoints David to be the king because Saul has been rejected. And there is a scripture 
I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this, but I'm going to read some of it to you because I, I just in the in the essence of time, I just don't want to I don't want to go there. Let's go back to the 15th verse of the 15th rather the 15th chapter, the 30th verse. We find that Saul, the king of Israel, has failed the Lord because he didn't do what God said, and when he failed the Lord, he comes to Samuel and he says. Saul replies in the 30th verse, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord our God. So Samuel went back with the Saul and worshiped the Lord. Okay, there is an extremely powerful notion right in that scripture. Samuel replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders. Many of us in the church tend to live a life that we know is a sinful life. It's a sinful life on purpose. But in times of need, we say, Lord, please honor me. Please honor me. I know I'm not right, but please honor me. Samuel, Saul was saying before the men of Israel, just honor me because I don't want everybody to know that I have sinned. Well, let's discuss what sin is. Sin is anything that Jesus wouldn't do. Uh, Steve has said that for years. But deeper than that, sin is a major stop. It's a block. It's the moment that the clouds club cover over and the box lid goes on and all of your prayers just hit the lid of the box and come right back in your face have you ever prayed in a place like right now I'm speaking in this room and it's ambient and it's going all over the place I have freedom of speech but the minute I start doing this I start talking like this right here in my face all my words are coming right back at me and I know that they're not going very far sin becomes this on your face it, it brings a shame to you but further than that, what it does, sin hurts the heart of God. And you know why? Do you know why? Because it's the only thing that can keep God from you. If, if God would not look on his son Jesus hanging on the cross, he, would, he turned away from him. Because the scripture said that the sin of the world was put on Christ. He bore our sin. He bore our affliction. He bore our wickedness. So much so that he became such an ugly sight that his father couldn't look upon him because of the sin. But yet we say, well, I'm full of sin, but Lord, honor me. And the Lord says, you know what? Get rid of the sin because it stops. Well, if it stops your prayers, if unforgiveness and hatred and sexual immorality and all these things stop your prayers then they stop your worship too they stop all of it that's the reason when you walk into churches sometimes and you walk into meetings and you feel like something isn't quite right in the air and there's something in the room not right there's possibly sin happening and it stops the heavens from being open it stops the flow of worship musicians in particularly are very heavily inundated with powers of hell. Satan fights us because he knows what we can do in the heavenlies. He knows what our giftings can do in the heavenlies when they're released and worship begins to go up. So he fights us with everything he can. Mostly sexual immorality and greatly variance, the scripture calls it. Any kind of ramblings in your mind, uh, unsteadiness, an unfaithfulness. And the minute that you succumb to those things, you're doing exactly what Satan wants you to do and you're putting yourself in a place where God can't hear what you have to say any longer. The only thing he can hear from you at that point is forgive me and remove this sin from me. That's the only thing he can hear. But musicians, because we have a gift, we walk in here and you'll never know it unless you're in tune with the Spirit. We'll sing the same songs. We'll dance the same dance. We'll holler the same words. And most people dance right along with us. But God's not dancing. 
He's going, something's come in on you in the last few days. You did run well, but what happened? And somebody thinks about gross sin. Well, something great, some sexual sin. There's some of that too. But just the very act of unforgiveness. You've got a family member who did you wrong way back when and you won't forgive them. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And it stops worship. Now let me show you the attitude. Let me show you what happens when that happens. It caused Saul to lose his kingdom. It'll cause you to lose your place with the Lord. And suddenly the floodgate starts opening up because you opened it by disobedience. I've never met anyone who fell into sin. I said I've never met anyone who fell into sin. I have never fallen into sin myself personally. I've always thought about it first. I said I've always thought about it first. I usually thought it through really well. Sometimes a couple of seconds. I've thought about it. Years ago, back in my teens and early 20s, I had re a real sin of pornography in my life. That stops pretty much the glory of the Lord in your life. <laughs> And it's a powerful thing. I found that sexual sins are powerful sins. They hold you like a death. They got you. They get you around the neck and they don't let go of you. Because there's so much guilt. There's guilt and secrecy. See, sexual sins, but see, the Lord says those things that are done in the secret places, I'll reveal. That's not a threat. It's just what he's going to do. God is not threatening you. He's loving you. But sexual sins have a way of getting a hold of you. And, and every time I ever picked up a piece of pornography to look at it, I thought about it first. I knew I wasn't supposed to. But then I reached for it and I thought, oh, well, I'll get forgiveness later. It's called cheap grace. And it doesn't work. Well, I'll just do this now and the Lord will forgive me later. Yes, the Lord will forgive you in patience, but the thing that is, you do damage to your spirit because of the guilt that Satan comes in. It's not God that does the damage. It's Satan who brings the guilt. And guilt is like a thick fog. Even when God forgives you, that guilty fog will hang around a few days sometimes until you really get in a time of what we all timers call praying through. Y'all know what praying through is? Let me explain you to the doctrine of praying through. It's, called, it's that place where you pray till your will breaks. It's that place that you pray until your will breaks. Until you cave in. It's till you feel the wind of the Spirit blow across your soul. Does the Lord forgive you the minute you say forgive me? Yes, He does. But if you want the well to get flowing again. And you want the communication to get flowing again, you got to pray through. I said you got to pray through. Give me scripture for that. I can't give it to you right now. I'm just telling you, you got to pray through. I'll give it to you later. I'm closing. I told you it wouldn't be long. In the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, the favorite, my favorite verse is, we all know that Saul fell, messed up, we come to David. He's anointed king. What's so funny about David is nobody around him saw kingliness in him. Nobody. Not even his own father. He brought seven other sons to show them off and left David at home. You ever felt that way? Everybody else is getting shown off and I'm kind of like left at home. <laughs> just call me, leave him home, Lindell. That's this leave. You ever feel that way? We've all felt that way. But see, the Holy Spirit knows the difference, you see. When worship is happening and the sin is kept out and we keep the thing open, you may be the lowliest and the smallest and the most insignificant, but the Lord hears the worship of His saints, those who keep the line clean. And God is not impressed by what He tunes in on the television 
or what he reads in the magazines or what's going on in cool in Hollywood. God's not impressed by any of it. God's not impressed by who's got the latest, greatest worship CD out. God doesn't care about who's preaching the latest, greatest worship or move of God or whatever's going on. God is interested in those people who will guard and maintain that connection with him because I want you to understand something God is so hungry for your, your worship he's so hungry for your communication he wants it much worse than you even want it he wants you to communicate with him so badly that he's made every provision every provision for you to have that free access to him and the only thing that will stop it is sin I can't help myself. That's a lie. You can. I can't stop. It's a lie. You can. Satan's saying you can't, so he's a liar. He can't tell the truth. That pretty much makes it possibility. I can't keep, get free. He who has the Son has set free is free indeed. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who walk uprightly in the Lord, to those who keep the sin out of their lives. There's no condemnation. There's no guilt. The fog doesn't even roll in at night. You lay down and you go to sleep and you have peace knowing that everything's right. Can I live there? Can you live there? Yeah. God wants you to live there. God wants you to be free. God wants you to have access to Him. You just got to do a little maintenance. Everybody wants a pretty lawn, but nobody wants to cut it. Everybody wants beautiful shrubs, but nobody wants to plant them. Everybody wants free access, but we don't want to maintain our spirit. And the way you do that is through prayer and worship. Now, let me finish. My favorite scripture I was getting to. Samuel 16. All the brothers of David are here, and everybody has come, and they've, they've all seen them, and the elders have looked. And <laughs> I love this. When the Lord said in the seventh verse, the Lord said to Samuel, he says, do not consider his appearance or his height. Do not consider his appearance or his height. And this is my favorite scripture. The Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking to you about the heart. Now, I'm not here to bring condemnation. I'm here to say to Brownsville, folks, we need to just pull out all those things that have gotten hid and covered up. And if there is sin in our lives, let's just get rid of it. Paul said he died daily, so we're not too much better than Paul, are you? So every morning when you get up, just die. Say, Lord, right now I just crucify my flesh. And Lord, today I'll walk in holiness unto you. Lord, and if I fail in any way, show me. And trust me, he will. He will. And you'll keep the line of communication wide open. Wide open. How many want to keep that wide open? Because worship is not about the music. It's about the heart. It's not about the words. It's about what's not said. It's about that longing. You ever just long for the Lord? just go through the day and you say Lord I just want you so much some of you say well, you know I'd like to be that way Lindell but I don't know how well let's real quick here in the next few minutes let's clear up whatever it is that's blocking that up what do you say and let's let the, the stirring of the Holy Spirit right now as I'm speaking to you the Holy Spirit is stirring you up I have the great confidence that that's happening right now he's stirring you up he's stirring see the Lord brings the hunger we can't invent it we can't jump up and down and scream and get hungry the Lord brings the hunger. You know what brings hunger? The desire for more than what we have. The realization that there's more than what we have. And I've decided that there's more to God. There's, I, there's aisles and, and tunnels and, and sides and places in God I've never been. And I want to go there. I'm tired of where I'm at. Are you? I'm tired of it. And I want the communication to be, I think it'd be neat to be like, 
like Abraham and be called a friend of God. I think it'd be kind of neat to just walk off with God one day like a couple of different men in the Bible did. They didn't even see death. They just walked off with him. Did you know that happened before the Holy Spirit even came in and dwelled in us physically? Did you know that? That happened when people were sacrificing animals. But now Jesus has brought this access. I'm saying, Lord, let one of us just walk off with you one day. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, I'm not big on religion, so I'm not going to be religious. I'm not even going to have an altar call. What I'm going to do is we're going to start playing what I call some soaking music. Some of y'all just need to be soaked. You're like an old sponge. You've been out and dried out a little bit. The edges are starting to get a little bit sharp and pointy. If they took your spirit out right now and threw it on the ground, it'd crack. You know, you can break a, a dried out, worn out sponge, but it's hard to pull one apart when it's wet. And some of you tonight just need the Lord to soak you. And let me say this. How many of you, have, as, as I'm speaking to you tonight, you know that there's some sin in your life, either that you've not asked the Lord to forgive you of, or there's some things you've allowed to come back in that we need to get rid of? Let's, let's, let's see hands. How many need to do that? See? I'm talking to you. I knew I was. Now, this is not a hard thing to do, and it's not a guilty thing to do. The Lord brings con conviction, not guilt. And right now, God is going to get real happy because we're going to clean up the lines of communication. We're going to take a skewer and just phew, clean, off, clean off the pipes. Roto-rooter, spiritual roto-rooter. We're going to go in there and just root out all the stuff. And I want you to know something. Some of you that, how many of you are new in the Lord? Last, you've been a Christian two years, two years or less. New in the Lord? Great. See, there's still more stuff God wants to clean out of your pipes. You've got to keep that worship. To see, the more worship that happens, the more word of God that happens, the less stuff accumulates. So right now, I, I just sense the Lord here. God's here. And we're going to get right to prayer. I promise you, on Thursday nights, we're not going to waste a lot of time. We're going to get right to prayer. We're going to talk to you about 20, 30 minutes, and then we're going to get to prayer. We're going to worship. And I want some of you Brownsville folks that are dry, some of you folks that are visiting us from all over the world, from all over the nation. There's some folks here from Texas. I want you to understand, folks, it's not about this music. It's not about the preaching. It's none of that. And some of you who've been around here a long time need to understand. It's the heart. Oh, the heart that longs after God. David said, my heart and soul long after you, O Lord. Even in the midnight hour, Lord, I long for you. And it's been a long time since some of you have been to that place in the Lord. And the Lord wants to take you there tonight. I'm saying to you, Lord, personally here, I'd like to go there a, bit, a little bit more myself. Lord Jesus, you're free to wake me up in the middle of the night if you want to. I like my sleep, but I like you better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as I'm walking through this room, the Holy Spirit's walking through here. He's walking up and down these aisles, and he's looking. I want you just in your own words, because I'm not into numbers and seeing who people who's praying. I just want you to right now begin to confess those things that have been holding you from the Lord. Just confess them right now, right where you are. You could play something, Mike. That would be great. Father, you're doing a work in people's lives tonight, Jesus. We want to see worship break loose, Lord. Just move out every hindrance, Lord. Forgive us. God, for any unforgiveness, anything that we've allowed to get back in our lives that you don't want there, in Jesus' name. We release it in Jesus' name. Wash us, Lord, and make us clean. God, at Brownsville, we understand all we need is a washing of your glory. Wash us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. Where are my prayer team, folks? Could I have all of y'all to come? Just stand over here for me. Just on either side. You can stand there. You can stand right here. Just stand over there by the tables and over here to the side. Just kind of off in the wings. 
How many are hungry? Can I tell you something? Somebody thought enemies camp. Songs like that is what this revival was birthed on. Not really. What we're about to sing right now is where this started. Holy Spirit, we give you total access to this place. Total access to our hearts. We just want to soak in your presence, Lord. God, all the dryness. I ask you right now as we move into a time of prayer, Lord. Soak us, Lord. Fill us fresh with the fire of revival, Lord. Heal the brokenness, Lord. There's some of you that the Lord started a work in your, your life several years ago and you didn't let him finish. I believe he wants to continue that work tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for coming tonight. From here on out, we're just... And let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do. Don't leave without prayer if you would like prayer. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on, just continue. Those of you who are working things out with the Lord, do it right now. I love this. the springs, Lord. Open the wells, Lord, that are blocked, Jesus. Let your glory come fresh, Jesus. Fresh, Lord. Fresh, Lord. Fresh, Lord. Come on, focus your attention on Jesus right now. Come on. It's not about me or anybody that's going to touch you. It's about Him. Focus on Him. Just begin to worship him and tell him about what your heart feels for him right now. He's been waiting all week to hear from you. Come on. Let it come out. Father, as we move into this time of prayer, Lord, we know that we have nothing to offer. And Lord, we love so much your spirit and we love what you've done in this place so, so far. But Lord, yesterday was yesterday. And we're in need, Lord. We need more today. Father, we've come. We just lay everything open to you, Lord. Oh, help us, Lord, help us, Lord, for our help comes from you. Ooh. 
Put your focus on the Lord Jesus. This is about Him. Come on. Holy Spirit, come. Let the wind of God blow here, Jesus. Those of you who've answered a minute ago and you knew you had things in your life that God is dealing with, we want you to get prayer first. If you'll come, just stand up here with me first. I want you to receive prayer first. Come on, come quickly. Really quick. Really quick. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, really quick. Come on. Just line up across here if you will. Oh, come on. You've got to go faster than that. Quick, 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 quick. Just step back far enough so someone can get in to pray with you. Lord, if you see these hearts here tonight, and I know you do, I ask you right now to just give them a fresh power. How many of you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that are up here right now. You haven't. Great. We're going to pray right now. Father, I ask you to touch them with your presence and your power. I ask you that, Lord, you would, those that have not walked in power, I ask you right now to give them a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost. A fresh filling, Lord. God, I ask, Lord, these few that have lifted their hands and have not received your baptism, it's a gift from you, Lord. It's not something to be earned or deserved. It's a gift. And I say to you in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, everybody in this line, begin to praise. Y'all stand with me. We're going to pray for everybody who wants to. We'll get these folks first. Come on, prayer team members. Let's pray. All of you out there, just worship, worship. Worship the Lord. Come on, let's fill the house with worship. Fill the house with worship. Come on. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, just pray with them. Just lay your hands on them. Pray with them. Come on. And all I want is more and more of you. Come on, tell the Lord that. Come on, lift your voice. I lift my eyes and I see you. When I'm gazing on your heavenly throne, in your presence I'm at home, alone with you. And all I want prayer tonight now just slip out of your seat just find your place in the aisle all around the front 
I want us just to fill the house with worship. If you want to walk around and praise the Lord, do that. You're going to find that God's going to set a lot of you free as we worship Him. He's going to touch you with His presence as we worship. Come on. Oh, all I want, sing it to Him. All I want is more, more of you. Your earthly cares and passions pale when you take away the veil, and I see you. When you open heaven's door, all I want is to have more and more of you. And glory will fade but the word of God will stand the earth and all its glory will fade but the kingdom of my God I will see And all I want, all I want is more. Yes, Lord. Come on, if you need prayer, just get out so we can pray for you. Oh, yes, Lord.